Hey everybody, this is your host, Chris Iacono, and you're listening to Season 5, Episode 13 of Atomic Rumpus. Awesome stuff happening this week. We're going to be talking about the strike down of the lawsuit trying to remove cannabis from Schedule 1. We've got an awesome Green Chef recipe for you, and some Q&A from you, the listeners. So hey, look, if you're enjoying the show, please share it with your friends, let them know about it, tell them how awesome it is, and if you got a sec, head on over to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. Every time you do, it helps us rise in their rankings and will help the show reach more listeners. And now, without further ado, on with the show. A federal judge dismisses a lawsuit challenging marijuana's Schedule 1 classification. Well, no shit, obviously. If you think judges are ever going to rule in favor of cannabis, you got another thing coming. You know how old you got to be to be a judge? You got to be like 80 years old. If you're 80 years old, you, you, you know, you probably, number one, you rode a dinosaur to work. Number two, you were around back when cannabis was referred to as the devil's lettuce. And number three, you're a douchebag. I mean that. Every judge, you're all, all he is. Every, I know you none of you are listening to this show, but if you do, I want you to know you're a douchebag. Nobody wakes up in the morning like, oh, you know what I want to do? Oppress people with my judgment. That's what judges do. They think they're, uh, they're, they're religious figures. They sit there in the stupid chairs with the stupid robes with the stupid wooden hammer. Who, who makes a fucking hammer out of wood? What are you, retarded? You know, if, you, if you're 80 years old, you, still, everything's made out of wood. At Christmas, you're excited to open up your wooden horses and cars. So here's what happened. A 98-page complaint was filed in July of 2017. Okay, that's like last year. That's almost a year ago. A legal team that filed it includes New York attorney Michael Hiller, a member of the legal committee from Normal, National Organization for Reform of Marijuana Laws, uh, by the name of Joseph Brody, and New York State Normal Director David Holland. So these are three cannabis advocates who are heavy hitters. These are like the guys who help change cannabis laws. And they filed this lawsuit and contended that the federal government, here's what they argued, quote, uh, does not believe, and upon information and belief, never has believed that cannabis meets the requirements for Schedule 1 designation under the Controlled Substances Act. So basically they're saying, hey, look, federal judge, uh, we believe that the federal government never had enough evidence and never actually uh, believed that cannabis should be on Schedule 1. So they're arguing that the government made a mistake putting it on Schedule 1. It's a good argument. It's a correct argument because, uh, as we all know, uh, cannabis has no business being on a Schedule 1. Schedule 1 is the classification at the federal level for the most dangerous drugs, highly addictive, toxic drugs that will kill you if you consume too much. No reason cannabis should be on that classification. So they brought this uh, lawsuit, and it's been dismissed. Ugh, dismissed. Even the word is, is insulting. I d- dismissed. Eh, I'm going to dismiss your argument. Eh, I dismiss it, because I'm a douchebag who wrote a dinosaur to work. So uh, lawyers for the Justice Department had a rebuttal. Uh, they argued for a dismissal of the suit, saying that, uh, and I quote, there is no fundamental right to use marijuana for medical purposes or otherwise. End quote. That, my friends, is your government in a nutshell. There is no fundamental right to use cannabis. That is what they think about your rights, your body, and what you put into it. So the presiding judge for the federal government, a guy by the name of Alvin K. Hellerstein, or as I like to call him, Douchey McDouchey Douchebag, also sided with the federal government. Oh, uh, yeah, obviously. I mean, you know, you're a federal judge. Who are you gonna, you're going to side with people's rights? No, you're going to side with the federal government. You got to understand, this is a gang. The federal government's a gang. It's a club. It's a, it's a group of people that help each other out. And they help themselves. Nobody else. They're there to help the federal government. Everybody else, hey, because there is. 
That's how these judges uh, work for the federal government. So Mr. Judge uh, Hellestein also rejected the plaintiff's claims that the federal law is unconstitutional because, and I quote, it was passed with racial animus. I don't even know what that means. He may just make words up. No, racial animus? He held that the plaintiffs lack the standing to argue such a claim because they have failed to demonstrate that a favorable t- decision is likely to redress the plaintiff's alleged industries as a dismissal of the past criminal conv- about fucking bullshit. What are you even talking about, guy? This is what they do. This is what these stupid lawyers... I hate lawyers. I really do. I fucking hate them. This is what they do. They make they make gobbledygook words. They take words that are normal words, that are good words, that words words that work together in a sentence like I'm making right now, and they make a gobbledygook. They go, the animus, right, racial, and they spin the words around into their own legal language. I'm not exaggerating here. Legalese, that's a foreign language. And the reason that you don't understand these judges and these lawyers when they're talking is because they don't want you to understand it. The more complicated this legal language is, the more you are at the whim of these judges and these lawyers and these committees and these lawmakers and these douche, douche, douchebags. So basically there were two arguments. Uh, One argument was that, hey, uh, it's unconstitutional, that it's on Schedule 1. And the other argument was that uh, something with racial animus. But uh, this stupid, hey, dismiss. Hey, dismiss. He dismissed both of them. Here's another quote from the judge. He says, uh, I highlight the plaintiff's experience to emphasize that this decision should not be understood as a factual finding that marijuana lacks any medical use in the United States. For the authority to make that determination is vested in the administrative process. Even if marijuana has current medical use, I cannot say that Congress acted irrationally in placing marijuana in Schedule 1. Let's pick apart this sentence and try to understand what this judge is saying. The judge is saying, hey, even though I made a decision and threw out your lawsuit, that doesn't mean there might not be medical purposes. But if there are, the administrative process will decide. So once again, that's a slap in the face to freedom. It's a slap in the face to liberty. It's a slap in the face to your rights to put into your body what you see fit. He is saying that if there's medical qualities to cannabis, it's the court's place to decide, not yours. So he's saying, oh, the court will decide if it's got medical qualities, not science, not your body, not how you feel when you smoke it, not if it actually helps you out, but they will decide for you. Once again, fundamentally showing themselves for the authoritarian control freaks that they are. And this has gone down before. There was a judge in Sacramento back in 2014 that said something similar along the lines of, uh, at some point, a court may decide that this status is unconstitutional, but not this court and not at this time, end quote. And then he snapped his fingers and banged his wooden hammer on the desk, and everybody lost their rights. So don't forget, guys, uh, you, you, you shouldn't fight the federal government. You can't fight the federal government. They're a gang with unlimited money and unlimited resources, and they protect each other. Really, just disobey. Just ignore the rules and do what you want. All right? Boom. Case closed. Dismissed. Uh, On the Green Chef this week, Dirt Bag Rice. Say it again. Dirt Bag Rice. Dirt Bag Rice. So is is this rice for shitty people, or is this rice that's made in a bag that's meant for holding dirt? It's a play on words, bro. I don't... where, Where are we playing? Dirt, dirt. It's like dirty rice, but it's for dirt. It's Dirt Bag Rice. You get it? No. I really didn't think I had to explain that. I don't even get what, what is dirty rice. Dirty rice. Is it's uh, rice that's, that we found in the garbage. That's, <laughs> yeah. You're eating freegan rice here, Freegan rice, yes. <laughs> well, maybe the birth of this recipe comes from me cooking dirty rice. It's a southern thing. That's gross. No. Why would you Nad- not just cook clean rice? Uh, no, no. Okay, so I know as a southern girl, Nadine wants to take credit for all things dirty rice, okay? Because <laughs> southern people think they invented it. Okay, is that really, is dirty rice dirty an rice actual like, thing? Yes. Yeah. Dirty rice are gizzards, li- uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> mm, <laughs> liver, mm. cooked and cut up and like m- mixed in the rice. So wait, this, rice. So this is like wasted animal, animal parts that most people don't use to eat with. But that's what Cajuns rice. eat. Yeah, Cajuns, Cajuns eat that stuff. eat all the worst parts and make the yeah, worst parts what, really delicious. So it's what happens happens when you live in the swamp. But why are we who live on land also emulating the Cajun swamp food? The same reason that freegans dive into the dumpsters <laughs> that emulate homeless people. Uh, guys like me, yes, uh, emulate the dirty rice. Psychosis. Well, no, a couple of things. Oh, Nadine cooked dirty rice, and then I, separately on a different day, invented dirt bag rice, okay? 
I invented it. I want I want to make sure we are clear. You totally invented, invented it. Invented dirtbag. Right? And he Definitely. actually he actually wrote the words TM on uh-huh. a on a uh-huh. uh, in the air with his finger, which is legally binding. So yeah, dirty rice is normally gizzards, liver, and believe it or not, that stuff is actually really high in vitamins and nutrients, yeah. along with some <laughs> some brown nutrients. rice nutrients. nutrients like tapeworm, <laughs> yeah. parasites, and total. Mm. <laughs> this tapeworm is very high in vitamin D. <laughs> <laughs> the crunch makes my skin <laughs> luscious. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's from the old parts of the animals, and you put all the Cajun spice and Cajun seasoning in it. This is a little different. This is dirtbag rice. Mm. So dirtbag rice happens when you really got nothing else to eat, Obviously. and you're and you're also <laughs> you're also <laughs> so back to the freegan thing when you're starving to death and literally have nothing else you can eat. This is the thing yep, for you. Yep, and you're kind of a dirtbag. Okay. You got to be kind of a dirtbag to make this because only if you're a dirtbag would you actually combine these things together in your fridge. I, I am honestly, look, hey, I clean up well, but I'm at heart, I'm a dirtbag, okay? I am, I am. I mean, don't give yourself too and much mine, credit here. My dirty rice is totally different. It's very high class yeah. dirty rice. It's totally different. It, it, look, I, I, so here's why, here's why, hold on. You know, people from the swamp, think, think of where they are and on like the pillar of society. You know what I mean? Swamp people, okay? Dirtbag rice is below that. So, mm-hmm. by comparison, dirty rice is like highfalutin, one <laughs> uh, percent so of rice. Is, this is rice that's worse than what swamp folks will eat. It's delicious. It's not worse. It's just for dirt bags. But it's lower than swamp rice. Here's where you start. Okay, Please. first off, you got to be hungry, and you got to have barely any food left. What you want to find is you want to find that half a container of old white Chinese rice oh, that Jesus. you ordered for Chinese no, food no. a couple of days ago. Okay? No, that's where you start. That's the right. worst rice. Ex- now we're going to make it amazing, dude. No. We're going to make it Here's how you make a dirtbag rice. Start off with that cold, clammy rice. It's a couple of days, two or three days old. Okay. Take that out of the fridge and you're going to want to put it in a skillet. Okay. Warm it up on low. Start getting it warm. As it's warming up, what you want to do is you want to go into your fridge. There's got to be some type of cheese in your fridge. I'm sure most people have a little bit of cheese, either Parmesan. Or they got a little bit of cheddar. Is this like the old cheese that's been sitting in your fridge for way too long that you forgot about? I would not use that that's cheese. Growing its no, own this cheese? is just a little bit of cheese that you got nothing else to do with. No, You're like, this is oh. your Italian bubble. Everybody does not stock cheese. Okay. Correct. Somebody's, you've got so, cheese somewhere. Yeah, so recommended cheese. And if, if someone were to pick up a cheese to, Parmesan. to meld with their that, leftovers. That Parmesan that you got sitting in the fridge there, take that. Take that Parmesan you got cheese. just sitting around. Or yeah. you got those little packets of Parmesan, the packets of Parmesan that came with the pizza. Oh, that's that offensive. you put in the thing. Oh, it is. It's dirtbag rice. Oh, There's nothing God, friendly or nice about this. Okay, look. You take the you take the whatever Parmesan you can find. You throw some of that in there. You throw a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, whatever spices you like. Okay, if you like this, you put a little bit of this. You like garlic, you put a little garlic powder. You like onion, whatever you got. Pick one cheese and two or three spices that are complimentary. Because I know Brandon's about to say, "Oh, well, we're gonna put cinnamon in your uh, cocoa." Cocoa, yeah. I wasn't gonna say you that. you were gonna say I that. Uh-huh. I saw it. I was gonna ask if I could use posh spice. <laughs> She's my favorite of the spices. Okay, there it went. There it went. Take a couple of spices. Now the rice is warming up. It's getting warm. It's getting warm. It's getting warm. And then you want to grab your your gizzards, okay? Now gizzards in this case are going to be any deli meats you got sitting in the fridge. Why do they all have to be sitting in the? Why can't you go out and, and get new things for this? Because like, this is dirt bag rice. That's so, what I'm saying. So this is all the shit that's too old to have eaten normally. No, no, no. It's not just too old. It's just you got one piece of ham. Okay, you eat got ham. a little bit of rice. We call this the dregs. The dregs. Yeah, dregs but you rice. can eat those. Like, I can eat ham. I can eat one piece of cheese. Dirtbag rice. Here's the rule for dirtbag rice. You shouldn't have to leave your house to make it. That's that's part of the rule of dirtbag rice is that you don't want to go buy some food. You want to make something that's halfway decent. Take that old rice. Take the salt. Believe it or not, salt is the key to this. Salt is the key. Yes. Of course it yeah. is. You kill it with salt. Okay. <laughs> So, and then, what do you uh, mean by hold on, hold on, hold on? Just for us, those of us that are lay people, what is how much salt is kill it with salt? Enough to taste the salt. Wait, but are we talking like one or two shakes? Are we talking take unscrew the cap and pour the the, the thing in there? Like how much salt? Look, dirt bags don't measure. <laughs> uh, they don't. They don't. It's enough. Enough. Enough okay. salt. Okay, that's it. So take old shit from your fridge, old, put in enough salt. Not old, just just uh, singular, random, <laughs> Le- random and loner, loner that works together. And then, and this is the fancy part of it. If you got everybody's got every dirt bag has got that backup can of spam. 
that's sitting in the back of the pantry, crack that spam open, Mm -hmm. cut off a slice, make some cubes in it, boom, throw it in the rice. You're going to have a delicious bowl of a dirt bag rice. I was just thinking, is there anything else you can add to this recipe that makes it less desirable? And then you came out with spam. And are you serious? Do we really have spam in this house? <laughs> right. We have apocalypse spam. Yes, oh, we do. Oh my god! We not only hold on, baby. Not only, <laughs> not only do we got spam, we've got DAC. Oh my god! What? DAC. You, you D- know I'll die first. D A K. DAC. What is? I don't know what that is. What's the matter? You don't like the DAC? <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh my god! But Dak, apparently, she doesn't like it. She would eat you before she ate that. DAC like. is like uh, it's DAC. It's like when you don't buy spam, but you still <laughs> when, want when spam's too too high class for you. Wait, yeah. isn't DAC like the pot roast version to uh, spam's ham like quality? Okay, number one, you gotta probably be consuming pot to enjoy DAC. Uh, number two, you had actually the word right. Uh, it's potted ham. That's actually written on the container, and it's a rec- It's a triangle container, so it actually it's in the shape. Of like a like a Christmas ham, but it's not for Christmas at all. If you give somebody, this is like worse than giving somebody coal for Christmas. If you really hate somebody, put DAC in their stocking. But it's it's a salted nitrate apocalypse. It's apocalypse meat. It's camping or apocalypse meat. And we have a case of this. No, we don't have a case. So who's got a case of DAC? Oh my god, a case of DAC? That's extreme. That's a lot of DAC. We have two cases. <laughs> <laughs> we got a pallet of DAC. Nobody can have just one case. How much of these weird meats am I living with? You'll never know, baby. Oh god. Oh, you They're got hidden you, all. I got them hidden all over the house. You oh will god. know because you guys are moving. She's going to discover all of your uh-uh. hidden. Ill-gotten meats. They're like Easter eggs. It's like finding your porn stash. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Wow. I did not know he was into Dak. I don't know uh-huh. if I can continue this. You That's find... a fuck fetish I can't get in board. Salami's with. in the closet. My line is stopping at Dak. Look, I. What part of dirt bag rice did you think was nice or fancy? None of it. Exactly. Thank you. I'm glad you didn't disappoint. All right. I mean, I'm saying that. I rarely do. Are you... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this depends on who you ask. I suppose. And look, here's the thing about dirt bag rice. It's like it's like Guido disaster pasta. It uh, no, changes. It's, no, it's not like Guido disaster pasta. And if the apocalypse hits, you know I'm stubborn enough to not eat that stuff. No, she, like I said, she will cook you. <laughs> in some some Dak spices. And here's the thing. I'm trying to prevent Nadine from becoming part <laughs> of the apocalypse problem. As soon as the apocalypse hits, you can listen to the old episodes. Nadine's like, that's it. I'm getting the shotgun. I'm going out. <laughs> Clack. I'm like, baby, baby, it ju- we just heard the apocalypse started 10 minutes ago. Relax. Nadine Shh. goes from sweet to ruthless in like two seconds. Right. I'm trying to prevent her from having to go out and hunt by providing Dak for my family. Okay. that The, the <laughs> logic there is flawed to begin with. First, she said she was going to kill people with a katana, not a shotgun. Oh, it was a katana. It was definitely a katana. I she forgot. was going to chop motherfuckers in half. Well, I can. I mean, I don't have to. But Hold on. They're also the weapon of Leonardo from the Ninja Turtles. Yeah, that's Wait, are what... these the three prongs? No, those are size. The I think katanas, I need that. Katanas are like the swords that are super sharp that you can chop people in half with. Actually, I only need my hands. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> Never mind. So, so she's definitely going to kill and eat you because she's going to uh-uh. look at a pile of DAC which only sounds like excrement. No, no, no. Hold on. Or... Hold on. Eat the, 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 the. If I eat the DAC she won't eat me because I'll taste like DAC. No. Boom! She, she can katana your ass in half scrape out the DAC and use your skull as like the a serving pot DAC for per- actual food. DAC permeates everything so there's no way to get... Once the apocalypse hits I'm going to start eating DAC so she won't eat me. Okay? That's part of the plan here. No. I feel like she would just kill you out of spite. Like, you don't even have no. to eat you. Nadine... She'll just samurai you and burn you for a no, while. Never, you would never chop me with a katana, right? Never. Thank you, see? Uh, she winked at me, just so you know. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> and I got you, so I'll bring over the cooking utensils. I got some, uh, mar- I got some marinara. Uh-huh. I think we, we can do well here. So, yeah, that's that's the, it, it, it's not meat you break out ever. So this is not a, all right, just to recap your recipe, this is not a dish you would make, serve, eat, do anything with in normal circumstances. I've made it three times in the last month. This is not something that normal people would eat, serve, yeah. make in normal yeah, circumstances. Yeah, not with the spam. I didn't use the spam of the deck. I used the ham that was left over in the fridge, but yeah, I made it. This is like an eject goose abort mission 
type of meal when there's absolutely nothing else and you do not want to leave the house. Not even absolutely. This is when you're like, oh, do I want to eat a frozen pizza? Or, ooh, look, that box of Chinese rice. Frozen Let pizza. me make some dirt bag All rice. day frozen pizza. Chris has amazing creativity and productivity in the middle of the night in the kitchen. <laughs> there is yep. a fine line between creativity and, and insanity. insanity. Yes, yes. yes, And he likes to teeter-totter along. I do, I do. I'll be gone for an hour. She's like, where were you? I'm like, <laughs> counting my deck. I have seven. <laughs> Q&A on Atomic Rumpus. What is Q&A? Q&A is where you get to actually submit a question and we might answer it on the show. Or we might not. Or we might not. But we'll certainly reference it. Yes. So I, I'm going to put this out there now. Uh, sometimes the questions are a little weird. Sometimes they're personal. What? They could be about anything. Weird. Come on. None of our questions have been weird. Weird. Like, what? why did I come in the room? Or personal. That's personal too. Yeah. Oh, there was another one. I wanted to write that down, but I forgot it. Okay. First what? question. I, f- I think it was on the Facebook. I don't want to get up and check it. <laughs> I don't totally. feel like checking it. Totally Do you right. have the messages on there? No, uh, no, they want me to download messages. Oh, God. Like, yeah. What the f- or page manager you have to use. Yeah. Okay, that's never mind. I, hey, you know what? We are no longer accepting questions on Facebook. Uh, that's it. Facebook. Seriously. We're, we're no longer accepting Facebook in general. Period. We are boycotting Facebook. We'll get Fuck into that man. later. This question comes from Josh. Josh writes in, why was my nickname Roachman? Before I had ever smoked. I thought his name was John. Josh. Oh, we sure? Yes, we're sure. We got it right this time. <laughs> I'm just, if so, for those in, not in the know, I'm giving Chris so shit. Josh. Wait, what do you mean this time? We've already answered this question? No. No, no Chris already fucked up a name. I fucked his name up. How does anyone know that you fucked his name up? We, they didn't until Brando they said do something. No. <laughs> how? How? We're not going out live. I- no, because, okay, they they wrote the question in and I replied back, thanks, John, oh, not realizing it was Josh. Gotcha. That's how, much, that's how much he appreciates our listeners. Yes. He will, he will thank you and be grateful, but he will never learn your name. I I mess the names up sometimes. He still calls me Brian. Bri- Brian. 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 You never call me a wrong name. He calls you a wrong call name you every episode. Deep. <laughs> <laughs> Josh writes in, why was my nickname Roachman before I ever smoked? Roachman or Roachman? Roachman. Like, is there a space between the roach and the man? That's an existential nope. question. Nope. Is there, <laughs> there a space, is space between, between the, roach the roach and the man? The first thing that I think of is being a young girl, about 11 years old, uh-huh. at a sleepover, at a friend's house, and we woke up in the morning, and I woke up, sat up, stretched my arms real high, fluffed my hair uh-huh. and a big ass giant Louisiana cockroach fell out of my hair and I screamed bloody murder at the top of my lungs. Wow, that was your first interaction with a roach. No, it was just the most impactful one. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is what you picture for John. You picture him being a young girl. Josh. Eh, jo- jo- uh, Josh. <laughs> no, <that's-> Josh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing it, God damn it! You picture Josh as a young girl raising his arms. Floofing his hair and then a giant swamp roach falling on him. Out when, of his hair, not of his on hair. him. Ew. Ew. Wouldn't his nickname be Roach Girl, though? Ro- yeah, exactly. I think it would be Roach no, Girl. No, that's how I was relating <clears throat> ah. to the story. Okay. That's how I think he could have gotten the name Roach. So his his interaction with actual cockroaches would be yeah. like, like the, okay. So there's one that could be it. One for that. Where where's he from? Does it say? Uh, it doesn't say. This is all it's included in the question. I'm sure we could sleuth and find out, but let's assume he's from a place Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't be creepy. I'm gonna say Georgia. Go with Georgia. Then. <laughs> I'm going with Georgia. You know why I'm going with Georgia? Why? Because I'm pretty sure that they said they're from Georgia. Okay, I'm glad you remember. <laughs> I remember all of my listeners because that's how much I care. So, I remember the names. Why would you call it? It's got to be something with bugs. I'm, I don't know if he's got like some. How did, wait? Did he say as a child or why did he? What did, why was my nickname Roachman before I'd ever smoked? Before he'd ever smoked. So we're assuming okay. if you're if you're like a teen and you try smoking when you're a teen, you're probably 13, 14, 15. So before that. Why was he called Roachman? So maybe he, he like had a, an older brother, like 
other people he hung around that smoked. I feel and like his job was to s- collect the roaches. Yeah. Like he was the one that, you know how you have to, when you get down to like the little itty bitty parts, you have to empty it out into a bowl. Maybe. And then but smoke he, the bowl. But he said before he ever, but ever he didn't, smoked. It he sounds didn't, like it has nothing to do yeah. with that. No, he was the little, he was like the person that was tasked to do all that because he didn't smoke. They weren't worried about him smoking like the remains. So they made him... As a little brother, they're like, "Hey, you little brother, you're gonna be our little slave." Roach and- man, yeah, maybe yeah. he was a no, roach no, man. No, 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 no. To me, before I ever smoked is like before it ever had anything to do with. Oh, I saw marijuana. it before. Yeah, I saw it before I smoked. I think. I think maybe he used to burn roaches, like actual cockroaches, like a yeah. psycho, like a psycho. Maybe with, he smoked those with magnifying glasses. Ooh. No, I think he used to find. If he's from Georgia, then he's familiar with your swamp roaches, your ha- hair hairy swamp roaches. I don't think Georgia has. No, they have ocean. Yeah, but there's got to be they something. They don't have now. ocean. They have golf. Okay, Go- a golf, m- miss, miss Go- yeah. vernacular, golf or a golf, golf, a golf, <laughs> a golf. Okay, <laughs> they play a lot of golf out aquatic, there. Aquatic. It's still pretty hot though in Georgia. Aquatic humid roaches, humid. Uh, that's the only thing I can think of. I don't know. My my. Whenever I think of roach, I think of the scattering sound they make when they when they crawl Scurry. around. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, I was asleep one day, and this is in, at my grandma's place in New York. I was in the basement, and again, you know, semi dirt bag, so I would leave food out, and that attracts the roaches. And you hear them go scuttle, 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 and you wake up and be like, "What the fuck? Somebody's breaking into my house!" And you open up the lights, and then they scurry. Oh, so this this that's is where. Bad. Yeah. This is dirty, the s- dirty man. <laughs> <laughs> this is the secret ingredient in dirt bag rice. No, no, no. Brooklyn is a dirty, dirty place. <laughs> this is it. This is Ew. why. This is where the dirt Ew. bag. And I am from the gross swamp <laughs> region. Ew! That just gave me the willies. I'm the only person here that's from like an actual habitable <laughs> zone. What do you think I think when you're telling me roaches are falling out of your hair as a kid? I'm supposed to be like, oh, it's so amazing, just baby. Why not like a whole band, <laughs> like a whole military unit of them, like screaming? <laughs> Off and away. It was, Hell no. It was not a regiment of roaches. <laughs> so, did they get to where they actually carrying items? Like, did they have like? Did you see your spoon like t- trailing off into like? They a, had. <laughs> they had put the ladder up. That's All as right. far as they got. Yes. And then I turned the light on. They dropped the ladder and scurried you, back you, under the You fridge. had little mini like boiling oil pots that you would tip over like uh-huh. they're trying to storm a castle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd put up it's little- like warfare. Yeah, I'd have little rubber bands and toothpicks. I'd right. shoot arrows at them. <laughs> yes. Yes. Ew. That's uh-huh. what I so hope have. Yeah. I just see little toddler Chris with his like roach infested, like he's playing war toddler. with the little roaches. I was like he 26. Has... <laughs> toddler. Yeah. I was like 26, bro. That's what I said. Toddler. <laughs> So he he has like the little military hat on yeah. and he's got like the, you know, the fake guns and he's going pew pew with the roaches and the roaches are, are pewing back at him. I love well, that. I'm going to go with, I think Josh was a, I think Josh was a, he would burn the roaches with a magnifying glass. Okay. That's okay. what I think. I, I don't, I don't think you're an asshole, Josh. Just oh, no, no, you're an asshole. I think maybe you burn roaches. Though. Wait, is it? Creeping on burning. Uh-huh. Ro- I mean, I, I hate roaches and I'm squished tons of roaches, but burning them. Yeah, that's like torturous. That's like yeah, that's, but that's when like, they burn, when you squish them, they make the crackly sound and then yeah. smush. That's so disgusting, I, dude. When I you can burn handle them, it. I'm tough. Yeah. When you burn them, they smell like burning roaches. Yeah, yeah but roaches are you know roaches are going to survive the apocalypse, man. If anything, uh, if you need to eat anything right. after the apocalypse, you got to start looking at roaches. Yeah, you look at Twinkies. That's roaches, fine, roaches, but roaches until cells, then, cells develop once every like year. But until then, I shouldn't have to deal with them at all. It's well, agreed. Well, there agreed. shouldn't be a lot of things that are, and they still are. I have not seen one right. roach I'm going with... come into this beautiful, beautiful <laughs> state. Final right. answer, final answer. You got you got that there are roaches in your hair. You got that he's burning them with a, a thing. I got that he was a little mafia kid, and that was his nickname for the mafia is to collect all the little roaches. All right, so let's we'll find out if we're right, and I hope we win a prize for solving this mystery. Yeah, we'll get, we give prizes for, like, things, so yep. we should win them. And if you feel like asking us a question, please do so on our website at AtomicRumpus.com or on the Patreon page. We are no longer accepting questions through Facebook. Facebook can go fuck itself. Thank you, Facebook. Should be called Fuckbook. That's a totally different thing. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, that's a whole nother... Thanks for listening to the show, everybody. Please check us out online at AtomicRumpus.com, where you can send us messages and check out more information about the show. If you'd like to support the show, you can get premium content by visiting us on Patreon.com backslash Atomic Rumpus. Have a great week, and happy smoking. Happy smoking.